And so this way, and I'll be recording all the classes. So this way, if anybody misses anything, or if you wanted to go back and, and see uh, things you forgot, that, that would be great. Okay. Perfect. Um, I've got to talk to the school to see how they're going to arrange that, but um, we'll, we'll make something work. Sounds good. So, uh, Carol. All right, we're getting there. I, I can't hear you. Can you hear me? I, we can hear you. I, I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yes. I can't hear you. Oh, oh, I know. Wait, wait. Never mind. It's me. <laughs> I've got my computer on mute. Okay. All right, there you go. Yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> Ron, perfect. This isn't bad, four to six. We'll just wait for a few more minutes and we'll get everybody. Uh, so did everybody have fun trying to draw a pig? Is everybody using the microphone on their computer rather than calling in on their phone? I believe so. Yep. Unfortunately, um, John is, um, he will be joining us, but kind of a little later, or he's trying to join us as soon as he can uh, get to a rest stop. He was at a meeting and uh, it went a little late, so, um, but he will be joining us. And um, he probably will be joining us 
my phone, but if he gets to a rest stop and he can get the Wi-Fi, he'll be, uh, he'll be with the, the rest of us. He'll be able to see us and we'll be able to see him. So, um, cool. Uh, let's give it another minute and uh, just, just to wait for um, kind of Lee. So that has every did everybody get a everybody got to access the file the first reading was a PowerPoint, was a PowerPoint presentation so okay good 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 um, I'm hoping you guys got a lot of questions and you did some work All right, so why don't we just get started and um, let's move forward. So, hi there, <laughs> welcome back. And uh, we're, we're starting our, our class with our first uh, re uh, reading that you've had. So does anybody have any questions before we get into showing us your, your pig? <laughs> why don't we do the fun part first? Let's, let's show the pig. So who, who should, let me, let me start first. I, I didn't draw a pig, but uh, Carol drew a pig and she sent it to me. So what I'll do is I will share my screen with you guys. Uh, yeah, that one there, share screen. I'm hoping everybody can see it. So here's a pig. This is Carol's pig. So. So the reason I usually do this with all, all the, uh, well, with the two of the classes that I teach, because um, what it does, is it, it's an icebreaker. And, and there's a little psycho, psych, psychology behind this, but it's all in fun. So um, let's, let's, see what, let's see what it says here. It says that if, um, all right, go over the pig analysis as a group. Here we go. Who drew at the top, middle, or a bottom? Go through each area where they, uh, um, were, were they accurate and do they match the personality? So pig analysis. If the pig is drawn towards the bottom of the page, you have a tendency to be positive and optimistic. Eh, I'm not sure. Uh, towards the middle of the page, you have a tendency to be a realist. I think you're a realist, uh, Carol. And um, if it's drawn to the bottom of the page, you have a tendency to be a pessimist or be pessimistic and may be prone to behaving negatively. Wow, okay. All that from drawing to the bottom of the page. So if the pig now is facing left, you have a tendency to believe in tradition and be friendly. And you may also be prone to remembering dates well. All right, if the pig, if the pig is facing right, you have a tendency to be innovative and active, but may be prone to, but may be prone to forgetting um, where am I here? I'm going to be prone to forgetting dates easily and may not have a strong sense of family. Now, if the pig is drawn facing front, square on, you have a tendency to be direct and may enjoy playing the role of devil's advocate. You also are prone to neither fearing nor avoiding confrontational discussions. So, Carol, you're positive. How about that? And it's facing left and you remember dates well. That's perfect. All right. No, you don't remember dates well. <laughs> okay. Um, why don't we go? I'm going to stop sharing the screen, and I'd like to see everybody else's drawing, if that's possible. Who's next? Who wants to volunteer? All right, Grace. Show us what you got. Yeah. Uh, just sharing the screen. And boy, this is what you want to do. Can you see it there? 
Yeah. Oh my God. Yes. Um, yeah. So mine's definitely looking right and kind of looking evil. Now that <laughs> <laughs> That's a very, that looks like a very well-fed pig. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Carrying a lot of weight on top of his head. Um, yeah. So not feeling great about this right not now. Not feeling great about it, huh? <laughs> Only because wow. it's facing right. But yeah. Well, that, well, let me tell Well, let me see. It's drawn, it's drawn in the middle. So that means you're, uh, you're a realist. It's facing right, which means you well, no, a tendency to be innovative and active, but maybe prone to forgetting dates and have a strong sense of family. Okay, well, there you go. That's a good thing. And let me see here. If, uh, also, if, the pig has, uh, if a pig has many details, you have a tendency to be analytical, but may also be prone to being cautious to the point that you struggle with trust. And if it has few details, you have a tendency to be emotional and to focus on the larger picture rather than focusing on details. You also have a tendency to be a great risk taker and may sometimes be prone to reckless and impulsive decisions. Now that's if you have few details. Um, if the pig is, is showing four legs, you have a tendency to be secure and to stick to your ideals. However, others may describe you as stubborn. If you have less than four legs, you are, uh, it indicates that you're living through a major period of change and as a result, you may be prone to struggling with insecurities. Wow. They really got everything covered in these psychological things, don't they? <laughs> so, and then it gets kind of fun. Uh, well, it's all been fun, but if, you, if your pig has large ears, it indicates that you're a good listener. Um, if, your pig ha if your pig has a long tail, it indicates that you, that you are intelligent. The longer, the better, and the ears, the bigger, the better. So go figure. So what do you, uh, let's see, you've got, uh, oh, wait, you, you took away your pig. No, you didn't. There it is. Um, you have four legs. Okay, cool. And it's got a, look, it's got a curly tail, which is great. And you've got ears. The ears aren't that big, but it's big enough for a pig. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Wonderful. All right. Perfect. So who wants to be next? Gentlemen? I'll go, I'll go next. McDonald. Join the meeting. Hey. Hey there. John. I'm still trying to, you should just proceed. I'm trying, I'm in a McDonald's and I'm trying to get connected. It's going to take a okay. while. Okay. Yep. Ah, yes. Oh, look at this. <laughs> nice. Ron, you got big ears. You're a good listener. You got, oh, can you, oh, no, this is not, sorry. Stuff? No, this is, this is Mark, um, right? Mark, this is my, uh, Mark. This is, Mark, yeah. You got big ears. You're a good listener. And, and you can see four legs, which is good, which is good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, wow. Cool. And it's facing right. There you go. And it's drawn pretty much in the middle of the page. We got a lot of realists in this class. This is good. This is good. This is good. <laughs> And it's got a tail. Look at that. Huh. All right. Well done. Well done. All right. It's got some details in it. I mean, come on. Uh, yeah. Very well done. Very well. So far, so great. I love it. All right. Who would like to be next? How do I get rid of it? Uh, you, what you do is I just, you... I just did, right? Uh, there's, a little, there's a little black uh, at the top of the screen that says stop. Stop, stop sharing. There you go. All right. Ron, let's see your pig. Ron, you're muted. If I can unmute him, unmute. Okay, I got audio. Oh, that's a good thing. I don't think there's enough there. Yeah, to get that. yeah I drew that on on uh, SketchUp. I, I thought that's what you're asking for. So, but it was oh, a good that's exercise that's on SketchUp. <laughs> can you show it to us? Can you show it to us? Can you see it? Uh, hang on. Go down to where it says share screen. 
Where it and says where? Little green button. Share screen at the bottom in the middle of the page. Oh, okay, got it. Did that do it? Uh, oh, wow, look at uh, that. Yes. <laughs> Four legs, it's detailed, it's got a tail, it's got ears. Nicely done. For, for a sketch of pig, it's pretty good. And it's front, well, it's pretty much front facing, kind of on the side, but front facing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, look at this. It was fun. It is fun. Look at that. All right. Um, all right. You can, um, there's a little, there's a, li uh, there's a little uh, um, kind of red button at the top of the page if you want to unshare your screen. Perfect. All right. Um, who's next? Uh, Joseph? Why it's not on a computer? I have it drawn on a piece of paper so I can just hold it up to the screen. Yeah. Can I get the screen? Yeah. No. Uh, yeah, you got a green, the green, little green uh, button at the bottom of the page. There you go, John. I see you. All right, so if I want to hold it up to my camera, what do I do? Oh, there you go. Hold, it up hold it up. Oh, oh, oh that's hey, good. That's good. That's nice. Oh, wow. It's Harvey Weinstein. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, I get it. It's a pig. It's a pig. <laughs> it's <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> well, didn't say what kind of pig, but yes. All right. All right. Well done. Well done. Well done. Nice going, Joseph. Nice going. He's in the middle of the page, and he's looking forward. And, yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> and he's got big ears. And he's got big ears. Yes, yes, yes. All right, nicely done, nicely done. Um, I don't believe, let's see yours. Okay. I have lots of, I have lots of, uh, okay. Can you see it? There you go, look at that. Okay. Well, you got two of them, you got two of them. Uh, yes, I was trying whether with or without legs. <laughs> Now, show the legs. Think, show uh, legs. I was thinking more of a symbolic um, kind of logo style of pig. Um, doesn't have um, legs or tails, so I'm not very smart or detail oriented. But in actual fact, I'm actually very detail oriented. Well, there you go. Where you go. <laughs> but uh, there it is. This is good. This is good. Well, I have to admit that this is this has been fun, and you guys did. You guys have done very well and been very creative. Very creative um so uh yeah so this is a good start see we break the ice we have a laugh now we're ready to move forward so um well do we john would you like to start or do you just want me to continue well i'm not i'm as you may or may not be aware i'm in a uh yeah McDonald's and I can't understand anyone. All right. Anybody understand me? We can hear you. You can hear me. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so I'm good. No okay. Does everybody mute and stuff? Maybe. Let me know. This is this is about the most uh, challenging conditions I've ever tried to broadcast. Um, but um, but so I'm going to keep this fairly short. Keep it fairly short short and concise, which actually is somebody on mute. Now the echo back. Somebody on mute. Yeah, 
everybody's on on mute uh, on mute. Okay. Okay. So, so here's the just the microphone. Just the microphone. You guys can hear that. Can hear that. Here. Here. Oh, and you can hear. And you can only hear it once. Only, only once. once. You only hear it once. Okay. Okay. So, well. Well. I, I'm still hearing a whole bunch of the stuff I, in the I'm background. I'm still hearing a whole bunch of. Everybody's muted. Everybody's muted. Yeah, I'll tell you yeah. what. I'll tell you what. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna get in the I'm car, get in the car and, I'm, and I'm and I will lose the video, video and I'll just cut you guys by uh, audio. Can't, can't hear, hear you, Gio, because, because you're muted. muted. I can hear you both on your phone and on your audio, on your computer audio. No, wait, 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 wait. So if you lose one, there yeah, you go. Fuck that. What's that? Is that better? That's oh, better. God. Okay. But see, this is why we teach these classes too, to instruct it. Geo takes care of me. Sometimes I get lost. Okay. Um, so the, uh, as we, as we um, start this course in earnest now, uh, another ground rule, or not a ground rule, uh, another sort of general um, uh, distinction. Last week we talked about how much you were here to learn about prefab delivery and how much you were here to learn about sustainable design. And, and uh, we heard some gratifying um, uh, responses. That you were here to, to learn both. Um, the the uh, what I want to the, the distinction I want to get at this week is the difference between any kind of prefabrication delivery, any kind of factory delivery, and design. So that we're going to we're going to address both, but it's important for you to understand that um, building systems, whether it's panel, <coughs> analyzed, uh, uh, pre or modular. Uh, uh, timber frame is a kind of uh, pre-cut system. Um, it's all manner. Mark, are you okay? It's, it looks like you're not able to hear. Are you hearing okay? I, I'm not hearing John uh, uh, enough no. to understand him. Uh, anybody, anybody who's not under, able to understand me, hold up one finger. If you're not able to understand me, one it's finger. Strange. I have to strain to hear you. So, John, try this. Is there a volume on this thing? Uh, no. Well, yeah, there's, there probably is a uh, uh, mute. Oh, mute yeah. I can. How's that? Is that better? That's better. A little better. Yeah. How about you, Carol? Can you hear better? No? Not at all. Yes, that's I can hear you slightly better, John. All right, I'll I'll take a try at it. Everybody mute, because <laughs> when you guys come through, it's not wow. <laughs> um, the point I want to make is that construction delivery, you know, construction systems, whether they're a panel or a modular or a brick or a timber frame. Um, are independent of your design goal. Really what you want to start with is a design goal, and it can be a very straightforward one um, for this class. Don't make it your life's work. It can be a cabin in the woods. It can be, um, it can be a two-bedroom home. It, it, it can be something quite simple. In fact, that would be a good idea. Once you've got a design goal, the first thing you do with the design process is choose your construction system. Now, before factory delivery, your choices might go like this. Oh, I, this is my design, and I want to do it out of logs, or I want to do it timber frame, or I want to do it out of, of concrete block. You know, you would, you would choose one that was appropriate for your design, not the other way around. You wouldn't make your design 
um, sort of conform to your love of bricks. If bricks couldn't do it, you come up with something else. So the first step when, when uh, taking this course is to think about what you're going to design for this course. And then um, we're going to use that as an example, and we're going to take you through the process of selecting a system to concentrate on. Gio and I will be presenting a bunch of systems, but you're going to want to pick one that's appropriate for your design to really dive deep on and, um, and take it all the way through. Once you've learned how to do it with one system, it's pretty much the same to do it with, with other systems. In fact, that's the way I go about every, I mean, who knows how many buildings I've done at this point with all this gray hair, but this is the way I start every single building. I, I look at the design, I look at the design requirements. Once I get a notion of where I'm going with the design process, that's when I start deciding on which kind of building process I want. So, in very, um, so let me pause there and see if there are any questions or if anybody could even hear that. Any questions at this point? Any questions? I, I see Joseph is nodding, so I know. But so, Carol so has a question. So you're saying it's possible to go through your design process and find out it's not compatible with prefab? I mean, is yes, it that has. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, in fact, there's a very good example of that in this um, town that I'm working on now, um, where uh, there's two architects who are both building up the street. And I'm doing affordable housing and uh, market rate housing. Both. And they were just doing market rate. So and market rate means expensive uh, homes and, and affordable means just what it says. So um, the other architect put bays and um, all sorts of uh, gymnastics on, on the outside of the building. And he also had a very, um, very complicated uh, stair system that scissored back and forth and wound around. And, um, and then at the top, he had uh, elaborate, um, uh, you know, really beautiful roof system. Very expensive. Can you do that in the factory? Yes. Just, just to put that question uh, to bed, anything you want can be built in the factory. The question becomes, do you get a benefit from doing it that way? And so in his case, because he, he would have been really forcing the factory to do stuff that it didn't like to do, and he would have ended up doing a lot of sort of repair work on site. Um, I was not, knowing that I was, had been hired to deliver from factories, I, I used more like federal style, Georgian style, and vernacular style buildings. But when they're done, they, nobody can tell they weren't built, you know, 150 years ago. But those are simple buildings. In New England, those are very simple buildings. So they're very appropriate for factory delivery. It's that kind of thing. Um, I mean, and it's not just the shape of the building that, that figures into it. It's also the weather. Um, for instance, if you want, if you live in a place like New England where the weather closes down for half the year, prefab modules is a good idea because when they deliver them, you're weather tight, you know, within a day or two at most. Uh, if you're living further south or in a drier climate, then panels might be a better way because panels are more flexible, and, but they, they're open to the weather for longer. At the, at the, during the uh, set period, during the, when, the, when they come to the site and they get assembled. But of course, panels, are, because they're flat, you can put a whole bunch of them on a truck, and the Department of Transportation is not going to have a height limitation or anything. So you can, you can have longer spans and you can have bigger articulations and whatnot um, with panels. But maybe even panels are too too clunky, too crude. Say your design was a Victorian, a really articulated Victorian. So now you're in trouble because even though you've got panels, every window has elaborate trim and every, every you know, you have bows and curves and cones and all sorts of things. Can you do that in a fact? Yes, that's what we can. You might be better served by doing that kind of a, of a building 
in a in a shop, a large shop with a condensed shut through. So you start to see what I'm saying. Your design, to some degree, if your part of your design goal is to meet a tight budget, then to some degree you might choose the building system before you choose the design actual shape. You might say, listen, I want this to be a prefab. That's part of my design goal. And I, and I want it to be modular, and I want it to be paneled. A lot of students um, arrive to these classes with a pre-existing love affair with six structural insulated panels, or with um, uh, um, insulated concrete um, form, ICS. Um, you know, Geo is very much loved in ICS for the longest time, <laughs> and, and knows a lot about it as a result. Um, so all I, the, the main point I'm trying to make here is that um, this class is about teaching you how to get to the finish line on a design using factory delivery. But you shouldn't confuse it with your design process. Your design process is not just about building. It's about, it's about the site, it's about how you want to live, and it's about your values, and your aesthetics, and your taste, and, 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 and also your budget and your schedule. So all those things together. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, I have a question. Um, <clears throat> so um, can uh, prefab or modular be systems that can be used in a sensible way to add, to add another floor to a ranch, for instance? Or is it better suited for just ground up development? It's a great question. Uh, and we usually have at least one student in every class who does her, an addition or a, a, some sort of a renovation. Um, so the answer is yes, it's a, it's a perfectly reasonable um, alternative in some situations. So it very much depends on the situation. Um, if you have a building and you're adding another building to it, like that, it's a pretty, pretty easy thing to do. If you have a building and you're putting something on top of it, a prefab module on top of it, it might be easy or it might not be so. Depends on the structure of the pre-existing building. Um, if you've got a building like this and you want this building to interlock like that, that's you got to you, you, that's stick though. That's not going to be a prefab. Um, Nevertheless, after you've done some work with, with system building, as it's often called, um, you may use parts, like you could be doing a stick built building and use SIP. We often do that, just these, these large, super inflated panels. Um, or you might, um, uh, you know, modules are, have become so um, versatile now that they, they are attached to schools all the time. Schools that are short on a classroom, they'll just order these special modules that come and they attach them to the school and they have the proper fire rating and everything. And the corridor, there's a corridor that is created between say a row of mods and the existing school is all incorporated. It can look very nice and be extremely affordable. <clears throat> Usually the best way to bring a mod to an existing building is if you have the building and you bring the mod close and then you build it in the gap. Maybe it's a greenhouse or an entry foyer. It's not this, this gets built on site. Um, that's, that's probably the, the, the most successful way to do it. The general question, to answer your question, I believe, is yeah, you can use it. Good question. <clears throat> Any others? Okay, Any other thanks. Okay. Um, I want to make sure that I'm not in the way of any diners. <laughs> um, okay, so the uh, moving on with the scheme, then the next thing is that as you're thinking about the system that you might be interested in, um, there's a sort of inverse curve of of um, a proportionality between uh, uh, the amount of money you can save uh, um, and the speed with which you you can, um, well, well, let me put it this way. There's an inverse uh, relationship between the benefits of factory delivery and the flexibility of factory. 
So the, the, um, the smaller the units, the more flexible they are. <clears throat> they say that the first prefab system was timber planning. And of course, you, you can build anything from a small cabin to a large cathedral using timber frame. Very flexible system, but it was a prefab system. They, um, the um, uh, missionaries from England, when they were spreading out and sort of conquering the world, the British Empire, they would put these pre-cut churches into their um, into their boats, and when they arrived, they would set them up. It was a prefab. <clears throat> so that's a very early and a very flexible uh, prefab system. But there's actually one that's even more flexible, or at least it's, it's, a, it's the first modular, and that's the brick. So even a brick is considered a system. It's a, it's a repetitive modular system. But we're not obviously not talking about bricks in this class. Um, but the point I'm trying to make is when you get down that small, bricks and timber frames, you can really build pretty much anything you can conceive of. It's a very flexible system. Then if you go to the other end of the spectrum and you build, you know, the maximum width allowed, you know, modules, the maximum width allowed by the Department of Transportation of 16 feet in most parts of the country. Um, and you, you make it as big as possible, 52, 72 feet long, say. That's going to give you incredible efficiency and, and great value. But it's not very flexible. I mean, it's, it's, you're going to find that there's certain things you can't do. Um, and in between, but you're going to get the best value. No question that's the best value. So in between the big mods and the smaller, say, timber frame, you have uh, things like SIP or uh, there's a company called Benson, which is a uh, panel that, that have a lot of insulation and windows and wiring already in them. We're going to do a whole class on, on panels and panelizers. And, I think it's the next box, um, But in any event, um, if you can think in your mind's eye of a sort of a graph, and at one end is, is um, bricks and sticks and, and um, small systems, small piece systems. And then at the other end of the graph is just the mod, sort of halfway in between is the panel. That, that, that's the graph that sort of at the, at the low end, you have the most flexibility, but the least um, added value, I guess. And then at the other end, the modular end, you have the least flexibility, but the most savings in time and money. And then in between the panel, you have kind of an edge. Does that make sense? It's, just, it's not a hard and fast tool, but it's a good way to think about which systems you want to concentrate on first. Uh, as you design, you know, take a design through this class. Okay, yeah. Are you awake? I'm awake, I'm awake, I'm awake. All right, okay. all right. Of course, you have heard all this stuff so many times. You, you can be... <laughs> hey, it's never, never, never enough. It's never enough. It's always good to know. Um, so now that you have a, a good sense of where we're starting, um, how does anybody have any questions regarding the site? The uh, you were asked to put together a little site uh, site um, site talisman or a site and spare talisman. Has anybody uh, gotten to that yet, or did everybody concentrate on making the pig? <laughs> I'm you, Carol. I uh, I did a talisman. Ah, beauty! Show it to us. Please. I am um, not sure I did what was uh, expected, but let me, let me find it here. So, so uh, I'm going to look into that. Um, were there any general questions about what a talisman is and why? We're, I mean, there was some confusion about the pig, so it would be normal to think that there might be some questions about the talisman. Anybody have any questions about that? All right, there's my talisman. Oh, yes. 
Would you like me to try to explain it? Yes, yes, please. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, I wanted a house that was, uh, well, I've written it out here, a spiritual and healing house that is both beautiful visually, acoustically, and environmentally. Uh, spiritual and healing uh, for both the earth and the inhabitants of the house for the earth because it's a sustainable house. So in this talisman, the goddess represents Mother Earth and beauty. The singing bowl represents good acoustics and good vibrations. The oil represents good environment and healing. Cool. Yeah. What's in the bowl? Yeah, what's anything it's in the a bowl? singing bowl. You take the um, uh, and rub it around the edge and it, it forms a, a harmonic tone. Cool. No, this, oh, is, this perfect. is perfect. I love it. It's, oh. it's really fantastic. Nicely done. Nicely done, Mark. Nicely done. So anybody else? Come on. Come on. After that, you guys, I'm sure everybody's got some good stuff. Who's next? Nobody did it. Did anybody, did anybody else do the exercise or is Mark the only one? Grace? Sorry, I was confused. I thought, yeah. I know that last week there was some confusion with whether these assignments were due for the first class or right. these assignments were being assigned. And right, I thought right. it's the latter. So I'll have no, it next a, week, but yeah, yeah, no okay. problem. That's problem. If you can have yeah, it for next week, that's good. I, I, I did one. Um, okay. a first a first cut at it anyway. Sure. It's sure. um it's a compass. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. what right. this, this reminds me of um, the outdoors, and that's what I, I want to have the house be kind of just be inside the house it's going to feel like the outside is coming in and the inside is coming out it's just just one continuous flow i'm going to refine this a little bit but that's my first first cut at it no no that's good that's good that's good no that's the idea that's the idea perfect um anybody else yeah i have one um so i tried different things i, I tried to uh draw certain things that combine the themes of what I'm looking to achieve, which is designing, you know, sustainable homes and mm -hmm. uh, help reduce our energy consumption needs. So I was thinking of different things, but ultimately I chose something that's prefabricated. <laughs> so this is, uh, wait. wait, maybe I'll, one second. Let me rearrange something and then let's see. One second. All right. Ah. Can you see? Yes. yes. Okay, so. Here's the story behind these. <laughs> the cufflinks. Um, with a mother of pearl uh, on, the, on the front, basically. And these were designed by my mother. Uh, actually, they were made by my mother. And um, wow. the reason I chose them is because um, the, uh, <clears throat> she's, she's sort of, my source of inspiration for um, building building homes. She was an interior designer, and um, she was really incredibly creative. She inspired many people. She designed furniture. She believed in uh, you know designing beautiful homes, and uh, she she did great work. And I I I used to you know go go to different projects with her on site throughout you know growing up, and. Um, so I was looking forward to, you know, building, building out my business plan with her. Um, we did some renovation projects on properties, uh, various properties, but not really building a house. But anyway, um, so um, she, um, she passed away earlier this year. So she's, this is a reminder of her and it's something she made. Also about 15 years ago, she, um, although she was an interior designer, she, she um, decided to start making jewelry. So she took a course and actually 
I started making jewelry mainly out of pearl, pearls and uh, silver. And so um, it also reminded me that, you know, it's never too late to pick up new skills and, and, and uh, you know, change course and, and do different things. So I think, you know, when I'm thinking of taking this course, I'm, I'm looking forward to taking other courses and building up my design skills. I'm not trained in terms of, you know, architecture or engineering, but uh, certainly hope to pick those up along the way, but really leveraging the vision and, and um, ideas to, and working with artisans and professionals to, to realize, you know, my, my vision. So it's a reminder of, of that as well, that it's never too late to pick up and do, do pick up new skills throughout your life. Yeah. Nicely done. Nicely done, Emily. Nicely done. Thank you for sharing. Very well done. Very well done. Uh, let's see. Who do we talk to now? Joseph, did you do anything? Get a chance? No. All right. Um, it'd, be, it'd be good if you kind of think about it and, and uh, try to have something for next week. That'd be great. Uh, also, we have everybody? also, I would, I would add um, that Gio's uh, right. We, we should have it for next week, but not because it's an assignment. Um, it's, uh, it's a, a talisman is a, is a thing that you don't use incessantly every time you go to uh, do some design work. You use it mostly when you get uh, into a problem situation. When, when you could do A, you could do B. You could use panels, you could use mods. You could use, no, it, it, it could be blue, it could be green. You, you have a decision and they seem to be, you know, difficult to, to decide between. If you have a talisman, it's a good talisman, that tells you what your, your it's sort of a distillate of what your core goal is, which is design. Then when you get into a into a, a problem, like should I do this or that, it's usually it's remarkable how well it works. You can usually look at the talisman and say, "Well, those are my goals. That was my essential sort of point of departure. In this situation, the answer now is clearly A. So, so um, yeah, get absolutely get a talisman by next week. But more importantly, just have a talisman for your project because it'll help you. Um, I see this a lot, it, even among professionals uh, who don't, uh, it, in architecture, it's often called a part two. Um, and architects who don't dwell a bit on the part two of a building before they start, they get to the point, you know, they've, they've built the mass and maybe and they figured out the windows and the outside, and now they're coming to the door hardware. And they go, well, I don't know what, uh, should it be chrome, should it be... Or a bronze? Should it be? Should it be a lever? Should it be a pearl? I don't know. I mean, and they and so they usually default to just well, what's most cost of them. But if you have a talisman and a talisman saying something like it should be the most sustainable solution possible, then you might ask yourself, well, out of these all these doorknobs, which one takes the, the smallest uh, footprint out of the earth? In terms of my, maybe I use a plastic one instead of a metal one or a copper one. Or maybe I don't want to use a plastic one. Maybe my talisman has a lot to do with healthy air and water, so I don't want to use that. In other words, you can, you can have a dialogue with what your values are in something as small as a baseboard or a light switch type. It isn't always, you know, the roof one or the main master. It can be something really small. And when you think about a doorknob, Doorknobs, your front door, you touch every single time you go in and out of the building. It's a really important detail. It reflects the core value of your design, not just something that you kind of see that day you didn't know what to do. So get a talisman. It'll save your butt all the time. I use them all the time. I'm sorry, Gio. Cool. There you go. Back to you. Oh, no, no. <laughs> that was good. That was good. All right. Well done for the talisman. Um, and uh, Joseph, we look forward to seeing yours next week. And uh, so are there any questions regarding the reading? Anything regarding the site analysis? Is any, go ahead. I have a question on the talisman. Is, is, do you have a, um, is there a talisman for each project or, or that you have? Or is there, you just have one talisman for your design work? I think the answer is both. 
What do you think? Yeah. I would say yeah, both. Pretty much both. I always, yeah. I always have a focus for each building, but I, over over the years, I mean, I think Andy tells me, I mean, they're, they're so perfect. You wear them on your cuff. You wear them with you. They're, they're the smallest possible thing, yet they bring to mind everything that he learned from and did with his mom. Yeah. Said. So, um, on the other hand, um, uh, Mark Talisman is very much focused on the building he intends to do. I'm not saying that's why you don't spread beyond the building, but it's clearly focused on the project before him. These are the, these are the goals that I want to remember and not be distracted. It's mm -hmm. be both. Yeah. Thank you. Any other qu any questions regarding uh, the site analysis? Has anybody, anybody tried to do some site analysis? Uh, I did. I think most of the site analysis, uh, Geo. Um, I I wasn't sure about. You know, there were I think fifteen or eighteen different examples of of things, and some of them seem not to be applicable to my. Okay situation and so you know I, I think I did maybe nine or eight of them or so all right did you do anything on SketchUp or on anything that you could show us or uh, well I can show you Joe, your head's perfectly positioned between the two neon light candles behind you. <laughs> <laughs> Go figure, eh? <laughs> so, um, so just a uh, the the site analysis is, is important because it, it it will inform you how you position your home uh, your home um, and you know and, and and not only that but it'll inform you of how you even set up the outside because you, uh, when when we're doing this it it, it not it it um, it's more than just uh, turning you know positioning the home for um, solar but it it also has to do the uh, positioning the home for um, you know other other things if there's noisy neighbors if there's you know a coal plant down the road or things of that sort so it's really it's really important because all that all that uh, will affect your, the design of your home the design of, of, of the rooms that are outside your home um, so go ahead mark John um, you know you just mentioned the the solar and so the um you know, I had to figure out where to find uh, information on SunPath. It turned out not to be too hard. I didn't overlay it on the site as the example that you showed, but could you, I mean, I have the, you know, the different angles here and, and, uh, and so on. Could you maybe go into a little more depth on how to use this? Sure. Um, okay. um, Mark, can so you move it up a bit? A, yeah. Say that again. <laughs> can you move up, make the circle like in the center of the screen? Somehow. Uh, you know, oh, I, actually, that's, that's, on, that's on your screen, right? That's on your computer? That's on my computer, yeah. <laughs> just, just make it smaller. Can you, can you uh, see it okay? Well, I can see part of it. I can, can, can other people see it? Yeah. Can, can Somebody. you see the side of your, the side of your screen? There's that bar, that gray bar on the side of the screen here on the right side, right side of the screen. There's like a gray bar. If you can pull that down, it'll pull up the circle. Um, yeah, that one there, that one there. If you kind of, okay. Okay. See, you okay. Okay. Yeah. You but you, but you want to kind of center. Perfect. That's it. All right. It's all yours, John. Um, all right, so um, okay, so the sun so, so this is something which um, that I'm going to try to simplify because it's 
not the easiest way to, to understand sun paths uh, out there, but it is it is fundamental to all the easier ways. Um, basically, um, this is your east, west, north, south. Um, that's your underlying compass. So you put that your house is here, um, and in the in the um, the heaven. Yeah, so. Like so this is the um, so this is the path in the summer. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. So the sun basically goes up to its apex and down again. And um, is that I'm pausing it because the last time I used one of these is when I was in college. Um, what I use is, is something that I, that I can actually look through and Yeah, and yeah you, you use and, a different one. Yeah. Um, okay. Who? What happened to it? Oh, I thought we were sort of done with it. I'm sorry. Take it back. If, no, no, if, no, no. Um, Let me, no. John, you want me to explain it? Want me to try it? Take a shot at it. Take a shot at it. Yeah. yeah I don't. Okay. So, this one, this one's a little difficult because it doesn't have all the markings on it. But uh, what you've got is you've got concentric circles. Those concentric circles, if you uh, correspond to those numbers, 80, 70, 60, 50, 40, and so on, those, that, that degree is the height, is the, is the um, altitude of the sun um, at, at a certain time of day. Okay? So if you can imagine uh, the, the highest point that the sun is at, uh, one finds the sun at the highest point at 12 noon. So usually at 12 noon is when the sun is, the sun is at its highest point. So in the, in the morning, it's, it's, you know, it's rising, it's at a low, low angle. And then as it comes up to 12 o'clock, it's at a higher angle. And then uh, again, during the, at the end of the day, it goes down in the west and it's at a lower angle again. So if you can imagine, we've got north, south, east, west here. And these and superimposed over the concentric circles, you see these curved lines. Does everybody see those? You can't see them over here on the right side, but you can see them more on the left side here. And usually these lines are, are numbered and they're numbered, each line represents a month. So if we start from the, uh, the right hand of the screen on the top, you got month one is January, then February, March, April, May, June, and it goes down to June. If I'm one, two, three, four, five, six, actually said June, July. Then it it goes over to the other side and goes 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So what ends up, and those are the months. So what, what ends up happening is, is you, what you do is you, you, um, <coughs> for example, oh, bless you. Um, there's also times on this. There's, um, there's like uh, four. So the straight up and down would be 12 o'clock. And then as you, as you move over uh, to the, and those the dotted lines those are those are the times of day so that tells you at, let's say at 5 30 at again if these if these were numbered you could read them much better but um I, i'll i uh, i believe i can find one when i can show you i can show you one um next week that's pretty um, good you know 5 30 is right you're talking about the summer too right right so what ends up happening is like if you take a look at uh, in the summer the, the sun comes up pretty early. So it, it comes up really early in the morning and it's a little east, it's a little north of east. So if you take, so if you take a look, um, you got east here. And if you take a look here, you got, if you take a look at east and you got a few lines that are north of east, that's the extent, that's the earliest that the sun comes up. All right. And as, as, as the day goes on, it, 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 uh, if you follow the curve, and in, in the summer, again, the sun goes down later in the day and in the west, but a little north of west, okay? And, and again, now, if you come to the winter, the sun comes up much, much later in the day, south of east, and then it goes down much earlier in the day, south of west. It, this, this, can, uh, this will make sense once we, I'll, I'll get one of these and I, it'll have all the numbers on it and I'll, we'll explain it to you. And well, actually, so, yeah, let me interrupt just a second. So, I mean, I, I think I understood that. I mean, I'm, you know, so I wrote in here, you know, that I'm, I'm assuming, can you see my pointer? Yep. 
Okay, yeah. so that that would be, I'm assuming, uh, winter, right? The the winter yeah. solstice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So that that uh, that's at about 23 degrees. Okay, and then at the at the most closest to the center, yeah. I'm assuming that would be the summer solstice. And is it reasonable to assume that at 43 degrees north latitude, the sun's highest point at noon would be 70 degrees? Yeah, probably slightly more, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And that so, so then, then my, you know, my question is from this, you know, is that if you're, you're wanting to have a solar powered house, what is the ideal angle of the roof? The... Um, well, it's not only the angle of the, the angle of the roof is important. It's also the the um, the um, the orientation of the home. So if you're and John, correct me if I'm wrong. If you're in the northern uh, upper northern hemisphere, you're they say that you, the house should be oriented a little east of south. And well, yeah, yeah. sorry, go ahead. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Yeah, in the northern hemisphere. Yeah. And so, um, and and that and, and, and at least the south. And I and I think the best the best angle was, um, uh, I think it's a six or seven pitch roof. And I can't remember what what, what degrees that is, but something closer to about six, six, 60, 63. So I have a question. So, are, are there is there a module in SketchUp or other software which shows you how the sunlight falls in your house at different yes. times of the day? Yes, there's a, there's a shade uh, function that, uh, um, that actually, if we can. But is that specific, is that specific, does that not need to be specific to your location? Because if you're in Northern Norway, yeah. I mean, you're gonna be in the dark for several months. Right, and if you, sure. and if we, if we open up a SketchUp, we can show And also you. is a, is a flat roof generally better than a sloped roof for solar panels, or is that not the case? Uh, well, yeah. If you're going to put them, if you're going to put, eh, uh, John, you want to answer that one while I open up a SketchUp? Yeah, yeah. You need to get that. Um, am I muted? Can you hear me? No, oh, I can yeah. hear you well. Okay. So, um, two things. Um, uh, one is, um, unfortunately. Um, Getting the exact angle is a little bit of a, it's, it's not quite the holy grail that everybody would, would like. It's, it's an easy target, but it turns out for solar collectors, you can be off by as much as 15 degrees and lose something like 3% of the efficiency over the course of the year. There's, there's just so many other factors that, that play in. Um, when you think about the, the cloud and the, and the weather variations and stuff, Getting that exact perfect angle, um, that's great if it doesn't have any negative impact on the building of your house, but you can have that orientation like uh, Gil was saying, and it's quite correct. You want, you want your house oriented a little bit east and south in the northern hemisphere, because not because you're going to so much get more uh, heat out of the sun, but you're going to get it when you want it. Your house is cold as you wake up. And, the, and everything has gone cold, the collector has gone cold, the, the batteries have gone dead, whatever it is. You want that early sun to hit it first. By the time you get to the latter part of the day, you can, you can spare a little bit heat because now the house is warm and you've you know, filled up the batteries and stuff. So if you're gonna cheat one way or another, you wanna cheat to your east towards the sunrise. That's one thing. That's just the orientation of the building because, and that's, it's handy when you're trying to orient your house not only with the sun, but also with the street grid or the perfect view or your neighbor's house or whatever else there is. Sometimes that 15 degree of play can make it much better. That's one thing. Then there's the angle of the roof this way, and that's a little less forgiving, but I think it's eight degrees. Um, you, can, you can take a photovoltaic and move it eight degrees one way or another and get virtually no, no uh, appreciable loss. Um, Although mm, that's a matter of time. Over time, it isn't a physical loss, which is why we have movable, movable mounts that, that track the sun. But even though, if you look up the specs, you'll find that 
um, while it does make a difference, it doesn't make, it's not like a doubling of the efficiency of the collector. So when you get to the angle of the roof, um, I'm, you know, this pitch is probably as good a guess as I would make. I would actually make the angle of my roof the, the angle that looks best, works best with also snow and things like that. And then I check it against the, the ideal angle. And the ideal angle is, um, I believe it is, isn't it like three degrees less than the uh, latitude that you're at? Yeah. Yeah, something like that. It's, it's, you can almost use your latitude as a rough approximation for, for starting out. And then, and then, and then next week we will come back and tell you the exact little detailed formula um, to get the exact angle. But at this point, it, 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 John, it also, can um, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, isn't it somewhat dependent also on whether it is a um, grid connected house that you're getting payback or it's an off grid house? Um, I was told by one solar person that if it's a an off grid house, then you your most difficult time is going to be in the winter. And so you need to be a more flat roof to get the most sun in the in the or I'm sorry, a, a more more pitch, I guess, a more sharply angled roof for for that. But if it's it's a, a grid connected house where you're wanting to get the maximum payback and you don't care that you don't have quite enough electricity at certain times of the year, then that you'd want a flatter roof to take maximum advantage of the summer sun. Yeah, that, that logic makes sense to me. Uh, the only thing I would caution is, um, as a general rule, that's correct. What I'd like to see and would insist on is the percentage of difference. Um, I, I didn't hear that, John. What'd you say? So that, that, that general rule or guideline is correct, that your solar um, uh, professionals told you. The thing that, that uh, the other half of that that is necessary is for you to calculate the exact difference because it's, it's not as dramatic as you think. Okay. It's not like it's not like when it's flat, you get um, you know a hundred kilowatts. Uh, but if it's up like this, you know you get um, six hundred kilowatts. It's, it's much it's much less than that. So, so, so if I'm to understand you, the ideal ang angle being three degrees less than the latitude. We're at about forty three degrees north here in Saratoga. So. 40 degree pitch of roof would be correct? Sure. It actually could be 40 or it could be 45. At this point in your design process. Okay. You know, and, and then once you, there's so many other things impacting your roof, like, you know, the stand um, and the, the proportions and where the window's going to go, all this stuff. Once, once, so a good starting point is 40, somewhere between 40 and 45. So if there's other impacts in there, and then calculate the exact one after that. See if you lose a bedroom or, you know, and then you have to make that decision. I'm, um, you know, truth in advertising. I'm, even, even when I'm in my most aggressive solar environmental design mode, I don't advocate shoehorning our lives into solar carburetor. I mean, life is as important as that last two percent of the BPO So you want to get that, that deep stock. And um, that uh, so and and if you if you orange your house that way, south facing, does it, it, it is it redundant to have solar panels on both sides of the roof then? Or will you will you benefit from having solar panels all all over the roof? You're talking about um, uh, Motivate solar panels, right? Right. Like yeah, yeah. Like for instance, you know the Tesla roofs. You know they're coming up with they've come up with tiles. Yeah. I mean, if you go down that route, are you wasting money by putting no. tiles on the roof? Um, I don't know, John. I, I go. You go ahead. I mean, um, 
Go ahead, John. I mean, well, I, w I was just going to say that um, it's a little early to tell, but it is true that um, the ones on the uh, on the back will not do as well as the ones on the front, but or the south and the north. But you know, in the in the uh, summer, uh, the sun gets all the way around on the on the uh, north side of the house. Um, so over the course of the year, um, all of the panels, north and south, will pick up and generate electricity. But obviously, the ones that are more perfectly positioned will pick up. And, uh, produce more electricity, and so as a result, you know, technically pay themselves back quicker. Um, and, you know, it's a little bit of a matter of how much do you want the design of your house to be an equation for payback. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, to some degree, you also want your house to do what other things as well. So, it's, 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 however, you know, uh, I'm thinking, Mark, of your talisman, if you're looking for a, if part of your core goal is to make it as solar, you know, sort of solar powered as possible, then all of the, these things are correct. You should maximize the exposure and maybe even make the shape of your house, um, you know, follow that, that sun path mm -hmm. so that it's not a, it's not a picture, it's something which actually gives good generous surface area to every location of the sun. And, well, that that'll produce a very beautiful form, but maybe a challenge to get it out of our factory. <laughs> Everything's fine. For that. Sounds like a hundred-year yeah. payback on that one. Uh, not really. Maybe not. Not if you built it yourself. Uh, I mean, those are the kinds of buildings that we were all building uh, in the '70s. Um, but we were sick of them. As you were saying that, I was thinking, yes, yes, that's what I want. Until you started to describe it. <laughs> rounded surface and then I thought, okay, that's that's further than I want to go. <laughs> well that's the way the sun works. The sun is it's incredibly cursing. I would urge everybody, I think Steel's about to give us a demonstration of the get that solar um shading uh thing. And the thing that I like about this is it doesn't give you BPU so that's too bad. I, although there are add ons I think that will help you with that. What it does is it it shows how you're your building behaves in the sun. So you can find out at two o'clock on Wednesday, the 7th of January, how far down does the shadow come yeah. on that window? Or, you know, if I don't want the 4th of July to be a, a heat wave in my living room, how far out do I have to have the other thing? And you can really tune it. Right to the end. Are you going to do that, Jeff? Yeah, I'm going to do that, do that right now. Share the screen. So John, jump in anytime you want. Um, so this, this is uh, just an example. This is a, a, a model of a home. And so what we do is if you take a look, everybody can see my screen. So if you take, yeah, um, so you see here, these two lines, this is your month. So this is your month and your day. And here's the time of day. So I've chosen uh, July the 16th at 12.05, so July 16 at 12.05, and then I go over here, see this little little uh, uh, little symbol here? That's the, the, the shadow function. So if I hit that, what happens? Oh my God, look what happens. Now, um, at, at, now this, this is just a model that's in space, but just to give you a sense, um, once we, uh, once you've, once you've uh, modeled, uh, let's say uh, your landscape or your 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 property, and you set it on there, now you get a better sense of exactly what's going on. So, at at twelve o'clock on July the sixteenth, this is the kind of shadow I'm getting, and I only have, I believe, this has only a one. Oh, stop it! This thing is really touchy when it got when you turn on, when you turn on the uh, the. Um, so as you can see, even even with a, a one foot overhang, this is how far down the shadow comes on the windows. Everybody can see that over here on the front windows here. So that that gives you that. So now if we now that now that was that was July. Now if we turn off the shadow and we go to the dead of winter, the dead of winter is what? Let's say it's July, January, January 27 ish. At 12 o'clock again, 
in the afternoon and we hit turn on the shadow and what do we got wow more sun is getting in so now if you're th what this does is it informs you and uh how you know do i want a bigger overhang do i want a smaller overhang um how to how to turn how to how to orient the house so does everybody get an idea uh, an idea of what i'm trying to explain in my crazy yeah. way? is that calibrated to where where you are um, in which country you're in and which part of the country you're in. Right. There is a, there is a, um, there's a, there is somewhere here and I, and this is the new 2018 SketchUp, which I have just started playing with. Um, and they used to have, um, you could put in your coordinates and, and that, and then the sun would be, in, uh, in relation to where you are located on the earth. And, and Gio, I didn't hear the first part. Is this, this is a uh, SketchUp add-on? Nope, this is, uh, if you go to, this is SketchUp, if you go to um, a view, go down, and you go down to custom, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, Grace, what were you saying? Were you talking about um, locating it in a specific location? I think it was file and then geolocate. There you yep. go, right there, that guy. Add location, you add your location in there and, and it'll give you, there you go. You tell it where you wanna be and it'll, you pick your location and then and you're done. So um, as I was saying, um, sorry, Mark, your question was? Uh, whether it was an add-on or not. And what no. you answered. Right, right. So what else, you go to view, you go down to customize toolbar, and then and then see you you pull these things out. So for example, it's got the here it's got the shadows over here, and then next to it it's got the shadows for the for the month, uh, the month date and time. Okay. Okay. So this and then what you do is you just take these things and you just click on them and you pull them out and you put them on your and you put them on your uh, on your toolbar. You see Excellent. That? Okay. So that's how that's done. So that's so, very cool. Yeah. So the, 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 you can pretty much get a very good sense of, of you know how 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 this should be positioned. You can get an idea of the overhangs. I mean, there's there's even calculations that we can do for for um, overhangs over a um, over a window for allowing the sun to to come in in the winter and, and uh, to be shaded in the summer. So there's that we can go into that too. But that's that's beyond the SketchUp. <laughs> um, John, you want to say anything? Um, well, I was a couple of minor things. Um, I, I'm I don't know how many people are using Mac, but the uh, PC interface is a bit different. But everything that Gio said is correct. You may have to hunt in different places with your location, but um, actually. Uh, what, what this reminded me of was that we wanted to ask everybody um, if they have got a site. Yes. Because one of the things that, that uh, is great about SketchUp is once you have a site, even if you don't own it, but if you're imaginary site for this, for this uh, course, um, using the geolocation thing, you can actually put your model on Google Earth so that everybody can see it. So you design up a little building like the one that Gio was working on there. And we have a site. We could actually put that on there so that when the, um, somebody else goes to that site, they'll see a little model sitting there. And um, uh, you, can, you can, of course, then watch the shadows uh, play across it that way as well. Um, so that's but one thing. How, how are we doing with uh, sites? Is, is everybody feeling like they've got one? And let me put it this way, since everybody indicated that they were going to have it, is there anybody who does that? Okay, so, so a fun thing to do is, uh, is to find your site, um, and um, even if you just make a little box, put the box on your site. And, and do the right. it's, not, it's not required, but it's helpful. I use the shadows a lot um, to analyze things. Right. 
respective courses and um, over. Yeah. Perfect. All right. So does everybody have a site or I know that some people were going to use, you know, this, the property that they're living in now. Uh, that's fine. But uh, it'd be kind of good if you get some sort of plot plan. You can get that from the city. Um, usually the, uh, you can get like a plot plan just to give you a, a general sense of, you know, the size of your site without, without too much of anything else and gives you some information of uh, your also the sites that are next door to you, your neighbors, sometimes even the ones across the street, depending on the, the plan. So, um, or How is even, a plot plan different from a survey, Geo? Survey's got a lot more. It's just specific to one property and it has everything that's on that property. It's a description, description. Of, every, of everything that's on that property. So uh, it, it'll show um, sheds, how many sheds you've got. It'll show it, anything and everything that, that's on there um, pretty much. Does the plot, uh, plot have the uh, plan have the contours and elevations on it? Uh, uh, not the ones that I've seen, not the ones that I've seen. Um, um, it, I mean, it could very well have, but usually all it is, is just, um, it's a division of the property, or let's say if you've got a block, it's a division of the block into the properties, and then where the main house is sitting on that property. And usually that's fine just to get, to get us started, because then if you're using your own property, you know your own property better than even the city does. How, how do you then integrate, how do you then bring that into SketchUp to start building your house? Um, what you could do is um, you, you could scan it uh, and you can scan it as a, uh, yeah, it has to be a JPEG. Scan it, save it as a JPEG, and then you import it into, into SketchUp and you trace, you would trace it using, using the, um, like as if you were drawing, you, you were drawing a, a square like we showed you the last time you would you would trace it um can i i don't think i have anything here that i can do that with uh, uh let me see here let me see let me see let me see, let me see. Yeah, I don't have, let me see if I can grab something. Oh, there you go. Go ahead, John. Is that an image? Uh, is that this, the, the, the traced image? Oh, no, that's, that's John. That, so, so that's, that's John's oh. model. We'll let him oh. go ahead, John. Well, this hasn't been put on a location, but I just brought it up because um, you can see that the PC um, uh, is different with the uh, where you find stuff. So I would think that I don't know how many of you are on a Mac and how many of you are on a PC. The best thing to do is just to have to jump in to, to uh, set up and just find a way around. The most important thing Geo showed you was the fact that all of these little icons can be rearranged any way you want. You just have to go in there and, and you go into the um, toolbars and you can just go through and you I mean, in this one, you, it's different. It's much more fun and more beautiful on the I, I, uh, on the map. But um, anyway, this is, what, what I use this for is to, um, this is, you know, if you look at, at uh, the, you know, the middle of the summer, I don't think this is even facing the right way, but you wouldn't, you wouldn't then, if it's noon, you can say, okay, in uh, June and July, noon, the, the um, course is completely shaded. And that's just lucky in this case because I haven't set this model correctly. <laughs> but then in the middle of, just as Gio is putting, in the middle of the winter, like there's December, um, let's see if it's getting close to uh, The sun comes up. And at noon, there's a little bit, this isn't right. Um, there's a little bit of sun on the porch, and then as the day goes on, there becomes more sun on the porch. Because even though in reality, the building is facing the south, 
in this model, it appears to be safe to the left. So I'm just reducing that looking at them. But, you know, just the kinds of stuff that you like to study is like, look at this at some point in the day, this building, the main building is going to shade this whole courtyard. So is that something you want? Um, you know, maybe it is in Arizona and maybe it isn't uh, in Vermont. Um, so another porch, you know, a lot of a lot of sunlight studies. You know, it's, it's, and it's useful to do even at the beginning when you're doing your math. Okay. Any other questions? This is sun. You can't talk too much about sun and sun and sight. I was going to also. Um, this is uh, you guys have got this, and um, uh, did they get this stuff too, uh, Jill? Or is this me? Which stuff? This is what's that? Yeah, with, with the uh, this piece material. Let me see. But yeah, bubble diagram. So. The bubble deck? Yeah, that, that's on there. Yeah, that's on. That's for the suit, right? That, that's that's in this. Yeah, it's in it. I I can't hear you. <laughs> oh, so sorry. So how much can so how much can you build that house for using prefab techniques? <laughs> the the house that I showed before. Yeah, this big one. That that's a, that's a renovation of a like a hundred and fifty year old farmhouse. No prefab there. Um, I'll show you one though that um, I'll show you one that we we're trying to build for a. Here's one that we're trying to build for one hundred and seventy five dollars a square foot. Um, is it, um, and when you say when you mention these figures, does that include you know everything from foundation to you know everything, soup to nuts, or is it just the fabrication of the house? Um, you know, that's everything. Okay. I guess I can't show it to you. I've moved the model, so I don't want to waste everybody's time finding it. But. Um, uh, what I was thinking, uh, the thing I want you all to, um, yeah, did you, did you all not um, think about your sites and the site planning? These are, these are two site plans. Actually, this is a number of site plans. Um, so at this point, talking about your, uh, can everybody see this? So it's kind of. This is okay. This is uh, what I want to. I want to look at. Um, so what? So if say this is your site here, okay. And the only thing you know about it is the road and the compass point, north, south, east, and west. And of course, if this were a real site, you'd also know the slope of the land and you'd know the kind of plant life that was on the land and you'd, you'd, you might even know if there were animals on it. But if it's an empty, even if it's an empty lot, there's a lot of information there. And you could imagine that without any kind of building design, you could sort of say, well, I want my gardening to the south because that's where the sun is. So I'm gonna, I know that, but I can't move the road. Uh, so I guess the cars should have a relationship to the road. So I'm gonna put the cars close to the road. And then, you know, there's a schoolyard here. So maybe this is gonna be informal family living. And you know, at this point, it, it may be informal family living indoors or outdoors. They're really just trying to activities, fundamental living activities on your site to get them, you know, closer to contiguous 
functions that are appropriate. So, um, that's one. Well, that's that's the what I want to, to focus on first. Um, do people have uh, have people given this a try with their sites? Anybody tried this? It's a really yeah, useful yeah, exercise. Just, yeah, go ahead, Jill. Has every has everybody gone through the has everybody gone through the bubble diagram portion of the reading? No. So use a bubble diagram. All right. So here, let me let, let here. Can I? Can um? Did you want to show them something else here, or I'll just show them what, no, what, what you're to, talking about? No, it's eight thirty, so I want to get into the bubble diagram. Okay. All right. Yeah. So let me let me let, let me do that. Um, yeah. let's do that now. Uh, let me. Uh, also, I have some great parties here. This is these are other bubble diagrams. Okay. Do you want to show them that? Okay. I just, I just sometimes people don't know what a bubble diagram is, how loose it can be. So right. Right. I just showed you one, and here's another one. The road, and this one. Um, I'm just drawing well. Maybe I want a patio here with a garden and cooking and eating back and forth. This is this sort of is a bubble diagram that has uh, a combination of of the occupants, the activities. Um, and things like the garden. Right, it's because I, 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 don't, I don't see that. I just see that. I still see the model of the house up. Is that what everybody sees or is it just me? Yeah, everybody's okay. been seeing the model of that, of that, of that farmhouse, okay. John. We haven't seen the bubble diagram. That's why, oh, sorry, well, that's why I, I interrupted. Well, I can do this. That's good. Um, Oh, I see. So then, so you can see it now, right? Yeah, John has started sharing screen, and it's got to come up still. Still trying to come up. Oh, there it is. There you go. Yeah. Okay. You can see it now. Okay. So, so, make it easy, easy. There you go. so the images so, that you're seeing here are the exact same images that are in your reading. Yeah, and I just I just thought it I just thought if there's any questions about how this works, yeah. this would yeah. be a good time for people to I agree. No, go good. Go go. I mean, bubble, bubble diagrams are supposed to uh, really address questions of juxtaposition and circulation. So, these, and these are not particularly good ones, quite frankly. But, um, so they can be very loose. In other words, this says formal living, and this says informal living. This doesn't mean that this informal living is going to be twice as big as formal living. So it might be that. It just means the formal living is going to be sort of towards the north and towards the road, and it's going to, it needs to be serviced by circulation, storage, and stairs, and it also needs to have access to the informal living. But it doesn't have to have any access to cars, and the formal living can be quite a ways from the cooking and the, you know, the gardening and the metal and woodwork. These are dirty zones. You know, the formal living's way over here. It's just a way of keeping track of juxtapositions that, that, uh, that you favor. Um, it, you know, knowing that this is the, the north, so this is going to be the, the darker side. Um, yep, you know, usually if you have a road, you're looking at that drives a lot of your decisions. Uh, even looser than this one is these guys. Um, whoops. Sorry. Um, this is actually three different um, ways of diagramming the same program, I believe. Yeah, yeah. No, nope, not quite. But it, we can't see the. Yeah, we can't see the three. You can't see it. Now you can. Okay, you're good. You're good. We can see it. We can see it. Okay. 
anyway, again, very, you know, this is a hard thing, the road. This is the uh, actual fence with games and sports. But this is just a really zoning kind of thing. It's like very nebulous. I want kids to be all around art. And then I want cooking and eating and garden here. And I mean, this, this one doesn't even say anything about bedrooms or basement or mechanical rooms. It's just, this might be part of a party or a palace man. It says, these are the fundamental functions and I want them to, to be configured this way. Or it might, you know, it might be configured this way or that way. Um, so that's, that's the first level of um, dividend. That's the first dividend, so to speak, from a bubble diagram. They can get very elaborate. But, um, that was all. Oh, that, okay. does, this, does this beg any questions on anybody's part? Or is, does everybody understand this? Everybody good? Um, so uh, you said you wanted three... Uh, I guess schemes. Um, mm -hmm. Is this an example of three schemes? Yes, three sure. bubble diagrams. But you you requested it to be uh, the the first one to be on site, basically as figure eight is. That would be yeah. That that would be good. Yeah. This one. What, it, what, we, what we encourage when we're, when, if you were taking a, a, the home design build course, what we encourage at the beginning is, you know, get, get a survey, if you can get a survey or, or plot plan, as we're saying. And what you do is you take some onion skin, we call it onion skin paper or drafting paper. And you could, once you place it over top of the, uh, your plot plan, you can trace it out. And then with that, that's your, that, that could be your bottom layer. And then you can put another paper over top of that and you can draw in, you know, your sun path and another one over top of that. You can draw in, you know, um, yeah, rain, rain patterns or, 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 or circulation or, or um, you know, pollution. Uh, and what, what it does is all these layers, what they do, once they're superimposed over the, over the, uh, the sketch of the property, you get a sense of, of you know, how, how how you can you know how you would place these these circles that John is showing, um, uh, or, or in each of these circles it, it, it is is a space where um, where things happen like cooking and 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 you know cars are parked and informal or, or formal uh, living area. So um, and and um, and that what that does is is um, it. Um, it kind of gives you a, a full picture of how the house sits on the property, um, how, how, how it sits on the property, how let's say you approach the property if you're driving or if you're walking. Um, and, and the circulation uh, also within the property gives you a sense of, you know, how far you are from the kitchen and, and where, where you, you know, how you would get from one place to the other um, very roughly. But, and if you can do that, let's say three separate schemes as, as you saw before, um, it kind of, it helps you to, to, to get a sense of when you go from the, because then you're going to go from bubbles and you're going to go right to drying out the spaces and, you know, putting up walls and stuff. So. Geo, can plot plans be gotten in, in uh, like C and D sizes? Um, you know, I got up to, you know, basically I did my site analysis and I got to this point, but everything that I have is, you know, I print out on letter size paper. So that's really too small to do these. Uh, bubble diagrams on. Uh, uh, I mean, you 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 could. I mean, you can still do them on a on a uh, on a. Well, are you talking eight and a half by eleven or eleven or a, like a legal size? Eight and a half by eleven. Eight and a half by eleven. I mean, you could. I mean, each each of those sheets could be a, a scheme. I mean, and if you don't want to waste paper, um, uh, there. I mean, you know, we. Uh, John, any any ideas? I mean, he could go out and get tracing paper just to just to do you know. I'll do a whole bunch of them. I'm sorry, I was looking for something to illustrate. Um, bubble drag. Can you restate your question, Mike? Well, let me. Sh can I show you something? Sure. Sure. Um. Okay. So. You know, this is basically, uh, I, I was able to get uh, 
contours from one site and I transferred them to uh, the survey that I got. Um, you know, that rectangle you see there is basically approximately a, a 28 by 55 foot house. So you can see in this, in a situation like this, it's kind of hard to, to do a bubble diagram. Um, actually, because it's, why, why do you say it's hard? Because it's too small or because? It's, it's so small. I mean, if you're having six or seven different items and you're trying to uh, superimpose them over the area of the house, it's, you just can't do it. Oh, that's, I think this is a great idea. Now, Gio, um, is there a way that I can get access to, wait a minute, I have a better idea. Here's the airport. So, okay, I've got your screen now. So, um, uh, in a minute, I'm going to share my screen, and then I'll show you what we need. This is a perfect demonstration. Um, do a new thing here. And do what's going Eight times by eleven. And then, um, and then we'll fly. And now, uh, I don't think you guys can see this yet, right? Um, no. Let me, let me share that screen. Uh, boom. Okay, so here's that. So here's my side pen, right? And I, this is, this is, I just uh, cut and paste your, your site plan onto it. This is an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper in a, in a, just a PDF editor that I'll use. So now what I can do. Sorry, oh, John, it's still it? loading. It's still loading. Oh my God. Um, still loading. Well, this is what I get from, uh, for trying to, Contact you guys for McDonald's on Interstate <laughs> Try, try it again. <laughs> um, it tells me uh, who's there. Desktop. Yeah, it says it's there. There's me. No. You're not. You're not getting it. No, I don't see your screen yet. But. Uh, Maybe, um, oh, you know what I bet I have to do is I have to stop my video. So who's, whose uh, screen is this that I'm looking at? What are you looking at? I'm looking at, uh, I think it looks like Mark's drawing. Is, that, is this yours? You're on Bluebeam. Yeah, I took this drawing and I imported okay. it into Bluebeam. Okay, I'm I can see it. Yeah. I can see it. We can see it. Okay. okay. So Mark, are you, are, can you see this? I can, I can see it. Okay, so I put this in a PDF editor. Now I'm going to zoom in on your house. And I guess, wait a minute, the slope, um, the slope I'm thinking, does it go down to the road or does it go, you go down to your house? You go down to the road. Well, this, we're, well you can't see my pointer, but uh, there's sort of a valley between the house and the roads. So you see that? Right. You know, okay. You know, that tongue. That way. Right? That's the, the house is at the highest elevation. It is. Okay. So here's what I would do if I was doing a bubble diagram of this. I would say, well, let's see. Um, first thing I would have to say is, how do I want my driveway to come up? How am I going to get up here? Well, I, I could show you some other. There's actually a, a culvert right where that tongue is, and the and the driveway yep. comes up kind of on the, you know, the left side of the property. Well, I'm here. About where actually a little bit to the left of where your two pointers. Are. Yes, exactly. So sort of up here. More or less, yes. Yeah. So, so that means that um, you know you could. And is south is north up and south is down? North is up. Yeah. So you've got a north facing slope. So first thing I do is I I draw in my pond here so that it could be, you know, knowing that I was gonna have a hockey rink there in, 
in the winter. Because that's north, north side and it's a low spot. So that'd be a good spot for a, for a pond. I, I and like then, it. And then this is, looks like your neighbor's high spot. But this, is, this looks like it's, it's a nice climb up here, right? This is Correct. really higher than your house. No, this starts to go back down again. It's the the house is at the high point, and and as you oh, go really? as you go south, it get it goes down again. Hmm. As you go, so north, where's the where's the view? Well, the view is south, really. Okay, great. So, um, I would make sure that I you know you you will know that, but I'm gonna I'm gonna make a graphic, you know, sort of thing just to remind myself that the view's there. I know you're never going to forget it, but when you draw it on a drawing, somehow it's there for you all the time, and your brain and eye picks it up and it incorporates it into your thinking in a better way. So now, I might say, okay, well, if the best view is to the south, then I'm probably going to want... Um, I'm, just going to, I'm not going to try to speak to you. I'm going to speak to me. So I'm going to say, well... I like to, I want the best view to be uh, along this side of the, the house, and because I oops, and because I don't. Um, so what what, uh, what program is this, John? That you have this in? Well, you can do this with a pencil on on the uh, on graphite. I mean, on the onion skin, on trace paper, on anything really. The reason right. I you have, use uh, you have the ability to enlarge it. Here, so what? What program is this? This Blue is Blue Bean. Bean. It, It's um, what? It's a cool program. Blue Bean. It's uh, uh, it's made by Review, and uh, 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 here, it is. here it is. Blue Bean Review. Can you see? Did that come up? Can you see that? A, uh, a uh, Blue Beam. Is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah. It's a good software, but there's a lot of them out there, and there's some free ones. This one costs a little more. So anyway, just to demonstrate this, uh, and, I, and again, I emphasize, you can do this with a pencil and paper. You don't need software, but I can't. This, this makes it possible for us to do this online. So I gotta, I'm going to put my living space. The view is down here, so I'm going to put my, you know, the big view space is going to be here. Um, but... I'm also going to sort of bless you. I, I'm also thinking, I, I'm just to the extent, but I'm going to, I'm going to sort of um, put my circulation along this side. Of the Oops, that was okay, the, uh, the blue beam, the, sorry, John, to interrupt you, but the blue beam thing is still up. That, that little, that, that. That dialogue box? Yeah, it's still up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wait a minute. Uh, here we go. Here we come. So, just better. It's getting there. It's still loading, <laughs> but it's 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 going to load soon. Good It'll come up. Good um, Could be I'm the bandwidth. Sure if it's, if it's, it's the bandwidth or if it's Zoom. I always like to blame the software. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, there you go. So this is also gonna be this is also gonna be the south side is gonna be where I'm gonna have a garden. Um and I'm gonna be coming in along here. So I'm gonna say right here I'm gonna put um my kitchen and garden. Kitchens and gardens just go together. So I'm gonna you know, I'm gonna put kitchen and garden, and I'm not even. Um, right. You're right about one thing. This is a little, um, a little small, but the the trick is to just to just um, make it a little bit bigger. The trick kitchen and garden, and then this is, I think the view area maybe, now I'm thinking the view area is going to go right into the, uh, maybe full length. The blue is the circulation, and so now I'm thinking, so if that's the kitchen and garden, it might make sense uh, to have a, to have a, um, the, the garage or the, 
on this end somewhere. I have no idea what the, what size the garage is going to be, but I'm going to just put it over on this side because this guy's coming, you know, the driveway's coming in. It's just, so we want the garage there. And it's, it's close, right? It's just the next to the garage. But, yeah, that's a pretty good fit. Um, and then, you know, I might, I might say, okay, now I'm going to um, put in the bedrooms. And, yeah, I'm going to put the bedrooms right here so that I can roll out of bed and um, get into the kitchen. But then I'm thinking, wait a minute, but that's no good because I'm going to come in, I'm going to go through the bedroom zone to get to the kitchen. No, that's no good. I'm going to move, I'm going to try it over here. So maybe the bedroom's over here. I wake up, I got the nice south view, but wait a minute, when I wake up, there is no south view because it's sunk to the east. So, oh, maybe, maybe I almost have it right. Maybe what I want is I want the, the bedrooms to kind of run along that side of, of my building. Because now I have eastern sun coming in here, and then as the sun comes up, goes around. I might not like that though. I might like, I might think like, yeah, but I get out of bed and I have to walk the whole length of the house to have my first cup of coffee. So maybe I decide, huh, maybe I'm going to put the kitchen over here um, so that I can, and now, uh oh, my, my driveway, and my, maybe I want to, okay, so maybe the garage does go over here after that. And then maybe I have to have my, uh, Maybe I have to have my driveway come in here. Um, yeah, maybe that's what I do. So now uh, I come in. Now this is now that I have you know, the car comes up. The front of my house is automotive. It's the big, you know, leading with the big garage door. Do I like that? Maybe not, but I'm not going to worry about it yet because I'm still in bubble diagram mode. So I say I want to build a, I want to do an orchard. So, um, so that's gonna, you know, that's uh, that's gonna go over here. Um, and uh, you, you get the sense of it. I mean, I'm I'm just using visual um, cues, just marks, little really symbols, to kind of play around with how to configure big zones, big things. And some of the things that I'm responding to, I can't, I can't really, uh, I can't really have any control over. I can't control where the sun is. I can't control where the view is. I can inventory them on my site plan. I can say, okay, well, I know the view's out there, so I'm going to put arrows there. I know the sun is to the south, so, you know, maybe I'll, um, you know, maybe I'll do a, after I use, um, my sun calculator, maybe I'll, I'll figure out what the arc of the sun is, you know, where it comes up and where it goes down. I'll put that on here, too. Uh, if I'm going to have an orchard, maybe I'll figure out where the orchard's going to go. Um, you know, when you're at this level, and this is probably the most important point of the night, when you're at this level, you should be thinking as much about the outside of your building as your inside. They're, they're both spaces that you're going to occupy. So, don't think of your building as a container. Think of it as weather, uh, a weather modifier. So you're living, you're living in spaces inside and you're living in spaces outside. The ones on the inside, you can control the temperature and the, and the moisture. The ones on the outside are more of an adventure. But you want to be able to walk naturally from one to the other. So you want to be able to walk maybe from your kitchen right into a garden. And you want, when you're sitting in a kitchen, you want to be able to look through windows that were set up specifically to frame and highlight the garden. Uh, and, and maybe, you know, if this is the big view space, the living room or the den or whatever, maybe you want the orchard right out there. And maybe you don't want the orchard out there. Maybe you want the long view uh, to be dominant and you want the orchard to be sort of off in the middle view. Um, you know, and then of course this, whole area in here, that's very important because this is your arrival sequence by car uh, and, you know, this is looking like a rural site, so my guess is if that's the scale of things, you're going to be mostly arriving by car. So maybe you have a, a garage, but maybe also you have, um, maybe also you have a, a parking area that's over here. Um, from, I don't know, maybe it's here. Um, maybe you put a, um, 
I'm just completely spitballing here, obviously, and no attention to the uh, budget or anything. But now, now I, if I'm going to drive up in a car and I have to drive up in a car, maybe I put a, you know, a, a garage on one side of a parking area and some other part of my building on the other side. So it just looks like a formal entry, albeit it's really you're just driving up to the garage, but it's, it's uh, somewhat formalized. You don't feel like you're in a subdivision. Um, I can go on like this a lot and I can start to think a little bit more deeply about what I'm doing, but all I'm really trying to demonstrate is the fluidity with which you all should feel comfortable making mistakes, moving things around, uh, talking to yourself while you're doing it, sort of say, what about this, what about that? And um, I guess, you know, I, I, we all started doing this with just tracing paper and colored pencils, but um, I don't know if it's me or if the time we live in, but it does seem like it's faster if you can get a little software, free Adobe, whatever, PDF. Okay. This particular software costs 200 bucks, so uh, I'm not I'm not advised with this professional software. But there's lots of free PDF editors that'll do this, um, or just you know, I word online. I'd be doing it with uh, paper and colored pencil. So any questions? I would recommend PowerPoint is, um, you can do it in PowerPoint, that's probably what I'll end up doing. Well, PowerPoint, that's fine. You, yeah, you can do that. Sure. Yeah. Um, whatever, you whatever software is fluid. You could do it in SketchUp if you wanted to. I mean, it's not that difficult. All you're doing is drawing circles or ovals. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and, um, and so I, I, in relation to the question you asked, uh, and I believe, so I'm going to share my screen with you guys, uh, just to show you how you could do this online. Um, and I'm hoping I'm not going to lose anybody. Okay. Share screen. Uh, where are you? Okay. So, um, what we have here, this is SketchUp. So what you would do is you would go, and let's say you've got your, your uh, you've got a, uh, a plot plan or a survey um, and you've scanned it and it's a JPEG. Okay, so what you do is you go into SketchUp um, and why is everybody over there? All right, so you go into SketchUp, what you would do is you would go into file and you go down to import and it, it brings you up into this screen here and then you'll select the type of file that you wanna bring in. You wanna bring in a, a JPEG and when you, when you go to the file, whether it's on your desktop or in your documents, you pick the file you want and then and you hit import. And what ends up happening is it should be, it, there it is, it comes in. Now, the thing is, it, you need to kind of, you're gonna need to play it to get it to, uh, to get it to the right size, okay? Um, this, so, for example, there's no, me there's no measurements on this thing, but if, we were, but if we were to measure, let's say, see, you've got here, this room looks like it's 10 by 15, right? So it's 10 the short way. So just very quickly, if we measured this, it says it's one foot 11. So that means you have to kind of size this. You have to size this up. And, and usually that's kind of done with a lot of trial and error. So you hit the scale button up here, and you kind of you, you pull it up a little more, and then you, you measure it again. And just to, and you know, now you're at two foot five. Okay, so this is kind of a long way, but just to give you a sense. But what you would do is you would bring this in, get it to the size you want, okay? And then what you would do is you would, you would go to the, to the pencil and you could draw in, you could draw in these, um, everything you've got here. You could draw in the, the, the line here. That's your, if that's your, I don't remember what that was, but actually, hang on. You can draw in, you know, your boundary line like there. So what you're doing is you're tracing it, okay? And and you would draw in, you could draw in your contours. You'd have to kind of like do them a little bit at a time because it's not really a curved line. Well, you could use a curved line, but that'll probably drive you a little nuts. Um, so, so what ends up happening is, is that, you know, you, you would, you would, you would draw in the lines for, so I'm, I'm doing the contours, but you, you can't, you can't do the contours. So what ends up happening is if, if you were to, 
once you've got all your lines drawn, if you if you take if you take and move your your um, your thing out of the way, what you've drawn stays there. Now what you can do is you can take you can take a, a rectangle. Okay. And you can say, okay, that rectangle, let's say that's the house. We make that a um, make that a make that a group. All right, and now you can move that around the site. You can move it around the site and say, okay, if that's the driveway, maybe I want it over here. Maybe I want it turned a different way. Now that's once you've got, now you could do the same thing even if you're doing, now this is just to give you a sense of how you can get the site drawn in SketchUp and you can kind of position your, 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 your idea of, of, uh, of your structure. But if we're talking bubbles now, which is what we're talking, then what you can do is you you can you do you do circles and you can do you know that circle could be your kitchen maybe this circle is your garage and you know and you do it in that in that manner so that you can move things around and now what you would do what I would do is I would take these circles and you know I'd make groups make them into groups come on make them into a group. This way you could move them around easier um, if you wanted to, uh, if you wanted to move them. And what that does is now you can, you know, so if you don't want that there, you move it up there. This one here, we maybe we move it, move this one over there like that, that kind of thing. Um, does everybody get a, get, get a, understand where I'm going with this? Yeah, that's great. Thanks a lot. I mean, Again, 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 if you guys need help throughout the week, just, you know, send us an email and we'd be more than happy to, to set up a time and, and uh, get you guys, um, get you guys squared away. All right. Gio, do you want us to email you, um, you know, the assignments as we complete them? Uh, no, I'd like the, the, uh, the idea of having this group meeting like this is good so that everybody sees and learns from what you've done and maybe what you didn't do. And, um, but once you've got them done, if you want to say, hey, listen, I got this. I want to show it to you before the class. Be more than happy to, to take the time with you. And we'll, we'll go on uh, Zoom here and uh, we'll have a one-to-one -one meeting. And I'll look at your stuff and we can talk about it. Great. John, are you still there? Did we lose you? No, I'm here. Uh, and I'm seeing everything. I must say I'm thrilled to hear that uh, that, um, that made that that came through well because on my end it, it was so well and again I think it's the bandwidth to play. Right. But um let's see, that's video game. Yeah, you can't see me? I think you have to stop your video there, maybe. No? There's a what? There we are. There we are. I can, I can see you now. Okay. I, I thought people would laugh there. Like, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no. I couldn't, I couldn't see anybody. <laughs> All right. Please don't leave me a Nick McDonald. Um, so, are there any other questions? Or please, uh, you know, speak up. Let us know. You know, if you're not sure of anything. Um, can I ask a question just to clarify? So, for next week, um, would you like us to to do all the assignments in this PowerPoint with all the site conditions and um, the bubble map and calling the um, Prefabricators um, pre that we research, or was, did you had you wanted us to do all of that for today? Okay, so this is how we ran the, the this is how we ran the course in the past, uh, the online course. Um, I would give you the reading, the next reading tonight. Tonight you will be getting the next reading, and then you have till next Thursday to get that reading to get that re to get the reading done and to do the, those assignments for next Thursday. And then next Thursday, you would get the next reading and you'd have a week to get that done. So, yes. right. So now it doesn't matter. I mean, we're flexible here. All right. So for if whatever you haven't got done this week, let's have it done for next week. Now you remember, you also have three work weeks coming up. All right. We have three classes and then three work weeks during those work weeks. We're going to be, we're available to you as much as we are now. Okay. You, uh, but you have that time to catch up because we realize that, Life happens, especially when you're taking a course like this. Um, 
and you're coming home, you're dead tired, and you got to put in now an hour or two hours of work to, to you know, try and catch up or, or get into it. And I know how difficult it is when you've, when you've got a job and now you're coming home and, you're, and you've got something else you're going to do. I know, I know it's difficult. So that's why we've got these uh, weeks that you catch up. Uh, but from what we'd like to do is, um, is set it up so that we give you the, the reading for next week, try and have some of those, if not all of those, uh, of the uh, assignments done. Now you're going to find as we move forward, what's important is, is that you get this model done so that you can show it to, to uh, the prefabricators so that they can, you can start having this conversation with them of, you know, this is my home, you know, give us an idea of what it's going to cost and we'll, and we'll, we'll coach you through the discussion that you're going to be. Has everybody actually gone out and researched and seen any prefabricators in their area? Has everybody done that? Okay. I've, no, I've, no. got the <laughs> I've had conversation. I'm oh, sorry. I've visited a couple, but not you know within the last couple of years. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, that's good. Uh, that's fine. Fine. That's good. Yeah, that's fine. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, if you, you don't, don't even I don't have believe to, you were saying, you find out who they are. Just find right. out like three manufacturers in your area. Yeah. That would be. Yeah. I've started researching, researching companies uh, online, but they're all over the place. One is, I just started a dialogue with a company called Point Zero. It's a Canadian company. The parent company is Canadian, River Bend, but uh, one of yeah, their subsidiaries is Point Zero Home. So just started talking to them, but they're in Michigan, I think, based in another company is called Acre Designs in California, but they're not in the East Coast, so maybe I should look more locally. Yeah, where are you again? Connecticut. Oh my God, uh, PBS, uh, KBS, uh, Westchester, uh, who else, John? Vermont. Well, yeah, you could uh, do I mean, Huntington all Homes. The ones in, yeah, all the ones in uh, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. Sort the of Connecticut. Um, uh, there's one in New York. Are, uh, yeah, go ahead, John. Sorry. Well, there's, there's quite a few. If you um, know, uh, there is, I, we're going to send um, everyone a link to a thing called Mod Coach. And it's an industry blog. Um, that is, you know, close to coast, but the guy who runs it um, is is really generous at the time. And um, first of all, you'll see the kinds of things that the industry knows about, um, which is, is good to know. Uh, but also, you'll you know, they have all these advertisements down the side of of their blog of all these uh, sponsors of all these companies, basically manufacturers, um, and uh, I think that's just a good place to get a sense of who's out there. The problem is just call, Googling uh, manufacturers' homes or uh, prefab homes near me is you'll get some factories, but you'll also get a lot of middlemen, uh, you know, people who are selling for other factories. So if you, just want, you, you just want the factories. So we'll send that. I'll make sure that that's okay. Um, because, yeah, in the Northeast, and most of you are in the Northeast, there's quite a selection, not even including the ones in Pennsylvania. Um, of the ones you mentioned, though, I, I mean, I'll, I'll look them up, but would they all have flavors of, um, you know, well-insulated um, uh, panels or mods w w which, which can get you to, you know, very high levels of energy efficiency? You would, should look at, if you want that, you got to look at uh, Vermod, V-E-R-M-O-D. And the other one I believe is, uh, that comes pretty close is uh, PBS, Preferred Building Systems. Um, and and DDR, did you say? Uh, John, uh, is, is KBS uh, on the uh, energy track or are they... 
they'll do whatever. No, they're more commercial. They're not. They're not actually marketing. They, you can get an energy efficient building out of them. But right. down in the Connecticut area, I would say if you look at PBS and you look at their mod, which is a combination of Vermont and modular, so it's V E R M O D. And the other one I would have you look at is Sensenwood. Sensenwood is, uh, yes. is a yeah. phenomenal product. Benson um, Wood. And, uh, Benson Wood? Oh, yeah. Benson Wood. E E N S O N Wood. And, and you know, um, a, a national company that, that has done some really nice energy uh, homes, that they're out of the Midwest, but they, have, they, they sell that coast to coast is Kindle, Kindle Log Homes. Yeah, they better. started out as an energy. Yeah, you know that. Okay, so that's they make a prime product. It's energy wise. Uh, uh, not Kindle. It's um. Can you can you recommend some uh, other panel companies? Uh, like yeah, SIPS panel. Um, you want SIPS yeah. or do you want like a like a, a dump panel or? You don't know what a dump panel is. I'm really not sure. You know, I mean, I, I, I'm a little familiar with, uh, uh, what is it? I think Bensonwood. Um, right, Bensonwood. Right. Yeah. Their system. That's a smart panel. That's, yeah, a, smart that's panel. a very smart panel. So yeah, the Bensonwood is, is the, probably the most important. I didn't hear that, John. John, you still there? You? No, you're there. Am I? Yeah, go okay. ahead. Um, uh, Bensonwood is great. Uh, since I get connected. Uh, Bensonwood is great. Um, uh, Ford panel is a good SIP uh, panel. And uh, we just discovered that uh, Connor Holmes uh, makes the best looking dumb panel. In other words, uh, their panels are pretty much just that, but they have the best trim packages around. So if you want an early American um, uh, design, they make the best ones, and that's a panel company. But there's there's quite a few other panel companies around. So for those of you who are thinking you're going to design something using panels, uh, let us know, and we'll do a little research to get get good options for you in your area. Does that work? Yeah, yeah. I can't believe you guys. You can't still see me, Tim. This is telling me that it's trying to connect. You can hear me though, right? Uh, I can hear you. I just can't see you. Yeah, it's, I don't think you're going to see me. Go ahead, Joseph. Can you hear me? Yeah, very yeah. well. And, and Lee, there's one near you called Westchester. And I knew I was going last Friday. I almost invited you because you're not far from there. They took me on a tour of the entire factory. We sat down with designers. We sat down with a, a, a planner. And they really kind of walk through what they do there. And it, it was interesting. I don't think there's a, so. a high efficiency insulated as you may be looking for, but it definitely gives you an opportunity to see what they do inside of a factory. And John, David Rockledge told me to tell you hi. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Appreciate you know, that. David I'll is... definitely look them up. They do a yeah. tour once a month. So the next one's probably going to be in about three weeks. They have two of them. One's for builders and the other one's for retail people who are looking to build a house for their own personal. Great. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Cool. Uh, Carol, you can't find any. Sorry. No, no. Sorry. Carol, you're muted. <laughs> Okay, now I'm not. What was the okay. question? Uh, have you found any in your area? I haven't. I have sort of, I'm actually not even at home. I'm going home on Saturday. <laughs> I've been okay. out of town, so. Been. Okay. All right. All right. I found Good. one. One five years ago it was a um, autoclave aerated concrete or something like that. Aerated concrete place. I'll see if I can find it. Yeah. 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 Get that one. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm trying to, I've got this Canadian company that uh, they, 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 uh, they do all concrete home and I'm trying to get them to be one of the guys to talk to, but. Oh, great. That'd be great. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Actually, speaking of that, sorry, are you, are you, are you, do you have another question, Carol? 
Okay. Um, are you going to cover pre-stressed concrete as well as a, as a material or solution? We're going to cover, uh, there's two types of uh, uh, precast concrete. Uh, there's one called superior wall that we're going to cover. It's going to be in, actually, it should be in the next, the next lesson. And um, there's, there's another type, which is called core slab, which we don't have much on, but I've worked with. Um, and I'm trying to get them to uh, give me some time. So, um, yeah, we're going to try. Anybody else have any, any, uh, anything else? John, are you still there? Did they kick you out of McDonald's? No, but I'm, I think I, I feel like I've been put in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, um, go ahead. Any questions? I have a quick question. It looks like a lot of the companies kind of have tours or some of them have tours like 10 and two Monday through Friday. Mm -hmm. If you, email them do they are they ever flexible with that or, or not really like is there a good chance of getting into one uh, yeah. Yeah. oh yeah yeah there's, there's a sales to it so they'll they'll bend over backwards to get you in all right yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah if they think they can sell you something they'll tour you <laughs> yeah it's fun and i would encourage everybody to go on as many of those things as possible and to listen to as little as possible about what they tell you. But they also, unfortunately, have not, if, um, I don't know why, it's very difficult to get uh, any of the fabricators to say anything nice about the others, except at, at building conferences, then they're friends. But otherwise, oh yeah, you don't want to build with those guys, they're terrible. Ours is much better. And you know, it's, it's, it's like, uh, they're just different builders. They have different methods. A lot of them are, are you know, quite like, like I think PDS and, and uh, Vermont can produce pretty much the same product, but one, you know, five times the size uh, facility as the other. Yeah. So it's just a matter of how you want to go. Will, will, Lots of things. a lot of choice. Will you be able to guide us to um, assess, you know, reasonable prices? Because part of the thing is, you know, um, you know, we, we don't want to be treated like, like we're, we're, we're just an end user and, you know, there's a massive markup and all these things. So how do we gauge what's a reasonable price? Because just, I mean, I, I'm just starting out here. So I was, I just had a dialogue with, with, you know, um, uh, point zero be before the course, I was looking at them, um, and you know, they just gave me some. I just wanted to bulk park numbers, and it sounded astronomical. So, I, I need to get bearings around, you know, how, what's you know, how much the, these costs to build so that I can figure out what markup they're charging and then figure out how we can get to a price point which is you know, mutually workable. Well, what do you consider astronomical? Well, you know, so I know and nothing's cheap and especially, you know, in the East Coast, uh, things cost a lot. Of money. So I, I, look, I just picked a model home that they had on their website. It was three and a half thousand square foot plus garage plus porch. porch. The turnkey cost w would be, uh, you know, they said about a million basically. Uh, so something around 250 to 275 a square foot just for the home finished and then the porch and the garage and all that and then i asked how much is how much would it cost just to deliver the frame the panels and they said two hundred fifty thousand dollars. that's without windows so that also sounds like a lot of money just for walls right <laughs> so yeah yep. but on the other hand keep in mind that when you when you pick a house out that's three thousand square feet that's a fairly big house so um, they're assuming you're dealing with a fairly good size budget. That's where they're going to start. Yeah. But 200, 200 bucks a square foot, that's crazy. You should be, you should be looking to, to, to build uh, under $200 a square foot. Not much under. You know, it, it should be like yeah. between 170 and 200 is reasonable. Yeah, and then um, when I, I said... 
Yeah, exactly. And that 275 was excluding foundation or anything. I mean, or, or, or you know, it was just yeah. like, well, it included finished house, house with a kitchen and, you know, bathrooms and all that stuff. But you, I would imagine, though, that let's say you start with a 2,000 square foot house, your price per square foot, I mean, if, I guess if you're using that as a measure, would be X. But if you want to double the size and you're adding rooms or, you know, uh, maybe one extra bathroom, but essentially you're not adding the, another kitchen or five other bathrooms, but it, I would imagine your price per square foot would go down if you're, if you're building a larger house. But yeah, yeah, but that's a, yeah, but that's yeah. a, right. Is that a fair assumption? Yeah, it is. Uh, depending, I mean, it's, it's, um, uh, if you're building a bigger house, in other words, if you're building, instead of a 200 square foot living room, you're building a 300 square foot living room, yeah, that's not gonna be that much more. It's just that much more floor and whatnot. But on the other hand, if you're doubling the size of your kitchen, yeah, it's gonna be a lot more. And if you're putting in a lot more bath, you know, in other words, putting in a lot more bathrooms, that's gonna cost a lot more because bathrooms and kitchens cost per square foot quite a bit more. Yeah, yeah. Um, but if, for, for when you're walking around on these tours, or if you're in a conversation with people, um, preliminary conversation, and, and uh, what they're offering is, you know, even starting to get close to $200 a square foot, uh, that's hot, unless it is currency. Because, yeah. it's, you know, it should include, at $200 a square foot, it should include doors and windows and, and pretty much everything except maybe hooking up the mechanicals. And uh, it actually should include the foundation. You're yep. still going to have your septic system, your well, or your municipal hookups, your land cost, your driveway. Um, but um, the building itself, 200 bucks a square foot. Another good way to go is, um, I was told once, actually it was by a salesman from Westchester, um, Westchester, my better home. They said, you know, if you want to just ballpark a new design, then just figure $60,000 to buy. And they yeah. said you probably won't be too far off. So, that's, and that's that's like ninety bucks a square foot. It's a, a, they were talking about a seven hundred square foot box, um, and so sixty thousand dollars for seven hundred square foot. That's somewhere in the ninety, low ninety. So, yeah. Okay. I didn't. But of course. It's, sorry. I was just going to say, I didn't take very good notes, but in the two readings, or two of the three readings um, that were emailed this week, there's some good breakdowns of costs and um, things I had certainly yeah. never thought about and, and things that make sense to pay for on your own and versus having done at the factory and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought it was, I don't know, very informative and, yeah, like I said, things I hadn't thought about. Oh, good. good. Remember, some of those are dated. They're not really current. They're kind of old. But still, they, 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 they're valid. And you don't know what kind of finishes they're using, obviously. I mean, you can, your know, prices can go through the roof if you, depending on how, what kind of tiles or finishes or appliances. Yeah, or, but, but, but you do know the finishes because each, each of these manufacturers have, especially modular, they have standard finishes. Yeah. So if you go with their standard, then it's, yeah. it's their standard price. If you want something beyond it, like anything else, you're going to pay more. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you can find out their finishes. I mean, we incur, I mean, what we do is we, we, you, you try to find out exactly what are, what are, what are all their finishes? What is it that they're offering? And then once you know what they're offering, now you can say, okay, you know what? I don't want, a, you know, an American standard toilet. I want one of those total toilets that are eco-friendly or, you know, I don't want, you know, and it's, that's actually your due diligence to actually go through all that and see what it is that they have and go from there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, just sharing thoughts, I mean, I, I don't know whether this is a realistic uh, kind of expectation or not, but, you know, I, I, I look at companies like Blue Homes and, you know, um, yeah. and, and Riverbend and Acre. I mean, I'm wondering if, if, if it's possible to build those 
um, for a lot less, uh, more like a cost. That's what I'd like to be doing, obviously. I mean, they're obviously going to charge a markup because they're doing everything for you. But that, what I'm looking for is to see if there's a way of, you know, yeah. working with suppliers um, where you can come up with something of a similar quality, but at, at a much lower cost. Yeah, that's, that's, what, that's what we do. And, mm -hmm. and the answer yeah. to your question is yes, you can. But step one is you have to know their game as well as they do. Yeah. I'm sorry, what was, the last, what was the last point? The, the, the secret to being able to do that is you have to know their game as well as they do. Yes. You have to be able to know, you know where the money is going and say, I want, a, I want that and I want that. Right. And that's, that's really why, why we are off of this course. Yeah, right. When I went on the tour to Westchester, the salesperson, one of the very first things she said was, let me dispel a myth. You can't build modular for less than stick built. And I thought, oh, here we go. <laughs> uh, right. <laughs> Disclosure. But then later I talked to a designer in kind of a uh, side chat and uh, I, I, I he made it sound like it, it's definitely possible to do it for less expensive and John that was David so the selling point was really just time then not cost that is a big piece of it yes and they have a lot of different models trim styles and they can do a, a lot of the work for you yeah, but the, 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 the economies of scale of building modular, so that has to be passed on a little bit to the consumer. I can't, they can't all take the upside. They're doing 14 houses a week right now. <clears throat> but I agree with you. It, it, I'm hoping it can be done for less expensive and better, and that's why I'm taking this course. Oh, who do we lose? We didn't lose anybody. We're all here still. Okay. Um, cool. Well, uh, any other questions? <laughs> we will definitely try. We definitely will be working with you um, as you're as you're going and as you're talking to uh, the different manufa different manufacturers. Uh, there's one thing to keep in mind, um, uh, and that is that. Um, you, you, you know, you can, you can get, you can get something for a reasonable price. That's what you have to keep in mind. And you also have to understand that, uh, um, the, um, as John said, it's, it's annoying their game as well as, as well as they do. So, um, yeah. So when, when you get an opportunity, if you haven't looked up uh, your, uh, prefabricators yet, please do. And, um, and uh, make arrangements to uh, go visit them. It's, it, it is definitely uh, eye-opening. It'd be good if uh, you do go visit them, take some pictures. See if they allow you to take pictures. So this way you can, you know, once you get back, put them in a little um, uh, uh, PowerPoint, a little presentation, and you can, we can take some time to go. And you can tell us about your experience. Because that, that, that's, that, it's all very important. Okay. And um, yeah. So if there's nothing else, I will see everybody next Thursday with more homework. How's that, huh? <laughs> thank you. Thank you. No, thank you, guys. Thanks. Good night. Bye. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Good, good, good night. Good night. Thanks. Good night. John, are you still there? John? John? John, are you still there? Hello? All right, recording, stop. <laughs>